Avidyaya mantre vartamana Swayam dhira panditam yamana Dandram yamana pariyanti mudha Andhe naiva niyamana yatandha Living in the midst of ignorance and considering themselves intelligent and enlightened, the senseless people go round and round, following crooked courses just like the blind led by the blind. Shankaracharya's Tika But those who are fit for worldly existence, they, Vartamana, living, Avidyaya Mantare, in the midst of ignorance, as though in the midst of thick darkness, being entangled in hundreds of fetters forged by craving for sons, cattle, etc. Manyamana, considering, thinking of themselves, Svayam, we ourselves are Dira, intelligent, and Pandita, versed in the scriptures. Those mudha, senseless, non-discriminating people, paryanti, go round and round, dandramyamana, by following very much the various crooked courses, being afflicted by old age, death, disease, etc. Just as many andha, blind people, niyamanaha, being led, antena eva, by the blind, indeed, on an uneven road, come to a great calamity. Nasam paraya pratibhati balam Pramadyantam vitamohena mudham Ayam loko nasti paraitimani Puna punarvasha ma padyate me. The means for the attainment of the other world does not become revealed to the non discriminating man who blunders, being befooled by the lure of wealth. One that constantly thinks that there is only this world and none hereafter comes under my sway again and again. And the tika. Samparayana is the other world, attainable after the falling of the body. Sampara. Samparayaha is any particular scriptural means leading to the attainment of that other world. And this means napratibhati does not become revealed to, that is, does not become serviceable to balam, a boy, a non-discriminating man who is pramadyantam, blundering, whose mind clings to such needs as children, cattle, etc., and so also who is mudham, confounded, being covered by darkness of ignorance, vittamohena, because of the non-discrimination caused by wealth. I am lokaha, there is only this world, that which is visible and abounds with women, food, drink, etc. Na paraasti, there is no other world that is invisible. Itimani, constantly thinking thus, he getting born, puna punaha, again and again. Apadyate, becomes subject to the vasam, control, me, of me who am death. That is, he remains involved in a succession of grief in the form of birth, death, etc. Such is the world in general. Namaste. So, these verses recapitulate the message of the previous two verses that we went over last time, which is that those who are attached to wealth, women, enjoyment, possessions, and so on, do not get the means to attain the higher worlds after death. 
So they come back around into a human birth or even a lower birth based on their previous nasty activities. And what are those? Struggling, fighting, competition for material possessions, power, uh, positions, titles, and so on. And we see this even among so-called sadhus, that they compete with one another in religious organizations for gray, grand titles, you know. <laughs> Who is that? Shri, 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 so-and-so, Swami, whatever. I mean, you know, isn't one Shri enough? Pretty soon we'll have a, a Shri war, you know? Who, who, who can have more Shri's than the other guy? <laughs> it's silly. It's like children. He calls them here Bala, children. They're children because they are struggling to attain things that no sober man would ever consider. No intelligent man with discrimination would ever consider to be important and certainly not worth hurting others for. But because they're mudha, mudha literally means ass, a donkey. Huh? Ever have any dealings with a donkey? <laughs> when I was young and I was living in the forest uh, or rural community with a lot of musicians and artists, there was one house uh, that had like a big corral, about one acre corral, pretty big. But the only inhabitant of this corral was one donkey. <laughs> and he was the most stubborn beast you ever met in your life. And uh, once or twice a day, he would get it together and give a big old hee-haw. <laughs> the whole town could hear it. We were up in a canyon, and so the sound just came down, you know, <laughs> covered the whole town. This is Mudha. Mudha is a stubborn ass with no discrimination who clings to the childish things, the body, the mind, relatives, possessions, and even the intangible things. You know, they, they complain, they say that the other world, the higher world, the spiritual world or whatever is invisible. Nobody can see it. Nobody can see the soul. Nobody can see God. So why should we even bother with it? They're fools. They're fools. Because they believe in things that you can't see also. Philosophies, religions, organizations, nations and so on. They're even willing to go to war and fight for democracy or socialism or thisism or thatism. You know, and these are just words. They're just abstractions. They don't have any real existence, even in the material sense, what to speak of the uh, sense of real existence, eternal existence, only Brahman has that. But, you know, Brahman does not reveal itself. Brahman has nothing to do. Brahman is not a cause. It doesn't perform any actions, and it's not the object of any actions. It's completely unrelatable, incomprehensible, Uninferable is the specific word used in the Mandukya Upanishad. It's uninferable. You can't infer its existence from any evidence in this world. But there is one saving grace, and that is the Vedas. The Vedas give the clue. They give the existence of Brahman and the means to attain Brahman, which is Aum. Aum is a very deep thing which we have discussed earlier in the Mandukya Upanishad series in detail. So I'm not going to go into it in detail here, except to say that in summary, Aum is the gateway to the spiritual world. It is the sound manifestation of Brahman. 
It is the symbolic manifestation of the four states of consciousness that we've gone over again and again in these series. So what death is saying here is that the fools who don't take advantage of the Vedic revelation, who don't perform sadhana or austerities to detach themselves from the childish foibles of the material existence, wealth, fame, power, money, and so on. They go round and round in samsara, and he says, they come under my control again and again. So, because death is the ultimate fair judge of all our activities, when we come to the court of death, he prescribes the next body as a curative to counteract the foolish activities and thoughts of the previous life. And sometimes that entails great suffering. Sometimes one has to go to hell. One has to exist in an animal body for a certain length of time. One has to go through great suffering in order to purge or cleanse the results of the previous wrong thinking and purify the mind to begin again uh, to try to solve the great puzzle of life. And this is only possible in human life. It's not possible in animal life. There are exceptions, but they're very, very rare. For example, Ramana Maharshi, great realized soul, to prove a point, took care of a cow, uh, Lakshmi, the cow, <laughs> her whole life. And at the end, she attained enlightenment. She attained Brahma Jnana. But this is very rare. And it's only a great privilege enjoyed by those who have direct association with a realized soul. And actually, that is everyone's condition. It is only possible to attain the highest enlightenment by association with someone who has realized it already. Because they can give the clue. Huh? They can say, they can observe you and watch you in meditation. And when you're headed in the right direction, they can encourage you. And if you're headed in the wrong direction, they can advise you and warn you to correct so this is the function, or supposed to be the function, of guru. Not that it's a title awarded by some organization um, to give administrative principles or political power over the members. That's wrong. That should not be done. Rather, guru should be a matter of the heart between the disciple and a realized soul. And the funny thing is, only those disciples who are really sincere will find the real guru. Huh? So, this is karma. See, the, the law of karma is incredibly fair. The universe is just. You know, people complain about getting bad luck or bad breaks or that somehow the universe cheated them or whatever. You know, the universe doesn't cheat. Everything that happens to us is a direct result of our previous activities, thoughts, and words. So, whatever happens in our lives is destined by what we did in previous lives. That's the truth known by every Jyotishi. Anyone who practices Vedic astrology can see this. The life's karma is laid out like a map. Huh? This is why I stopped doing astrology, by the way. I used to do charts for people, but it was depressing because I could see how most people have no chance whatsoever in their lives to attain enlightenment. It's blocked by their previous karma. So the best they can do is try to perform pious activities and get a better birth in the next life. But, you know, Try to give this news to someone. It's heartbreaking. It's very difficult. 
you know, to tell somebody, well, I'm sorry, but you can't attain enlightenment in this life. Best you can try for, you know, heavenly planets or something like that. But the one who has certain astrological configurations in their chart called moksha karika, indicators of liberation, they can attain, in fact, they attain by the force of their karma. They can't avoid it. It happens to them. It happened to me. I was visited by Shakti in 1984. I'd given Shakti pot and I saw Brahman. I saw the world in Brahman and Brahman in the world. I saw the underlying supreme consciousness and knowledge and bliss and existence that is really the foundation of everything. Then I spent the next 30 years learning from the scriptures to try to figure out what happened <laughs> and what it meant. And so now I'm sharing that. Uh, I'm trying to give as much as possible, rooted and grounded in the revealed scriptures, the knowledge and insights that lead to final enlightenment. So if you take it seriously and apply it in your life, there's a good chance you can attain it too. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya. <laughs>